Hello, everyone, and welcome to the How to Chess podcast. We are here with a USCF master, WIM. She was a youth champion and is a three-time chess Olympian for her native Peru. She's also the Chessable Classroom Manager. She helps oversee the excellent Chessable Classroom feature. I know it's something that a lot of chess teachers are a fan of to to use to uh, interface with students and uh, show chess, obviously. And she is a first-time chessable author of a much-needed course called Queens of the Chessboard. It's a collaboration with the excellent chessable author Brian Tillis, and it goes through a lot of the underappreciated but amazing players uh, from the history of female chess, including uh, Vera Menchik and Nona Gaprandashvili. But first of all, we are pleased to welcome to the show WIM Luciana Morales. Welcome, Luciana. Hi, Ben. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Yeah. And congratulations. We're recording this a couple days before your course is slated to come out. I think we're fairly confident by the time this interview comes out, probably a month after we record here in early March, it will be available. So congratulations on the course, Luciana. Um, So what was the impetus for uh, Queens of the Chessboard? Well, this was... um this was actually an idea of Gil, Gil van der Velde, the Chessable CEO. Uh, he, um, he suggested this topic and it was very much uh, right up my alley because I, I do like um, things that have to do with, um, with women empowerment. And also in the specific topic of chess, I think that anything that we can do to welcome and support more uh, people taking chess it's that's that's great and particularly with shedding light on these um women's world champions i think that we're trying to um fill this gap and 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 also honor these trailblazers of women in chess we're trying to um yeah to create more awareness of their their games, their lives, they do have, they, they do have some, some very interesting stories, um, but also their chess on a personal note, it was, it was very impressive how, um, I mean, obviously I, I, I knew the name of the very first, um, of the very first women's world champion, Vera Menchik, and I knew that she was, um, um, that she, she was playing with, um, with men with the strongest masters at the time in, in international tournaments, but her level was was pretty good. And and then late later Nona Gaprindas really really like takes this bar way up high. Her uh, I with Nona Gaprindas really I feel like she walked so Judith could run. Yeah, well said. And of course, as you mentioned in the course, uh, Nona Gaprandashvili, her name became somewhat, I mean, she was well known to to hardcore chess fans already, but of course she came up in the Queen's Gambit and then had the lawsuit, which uh, she settled and got some money for them. Um, Speaking of sort of people not getting their respect of them incorrectly portraying uh, her, what was it that they said in the in the uh, in the series, Luciana? They said that she was a women's world champion, but she had never played with a man, and right, that was is... incorrect because she extensively played with men, and she inflicted very painful <laughs> victories to to many many of them. And um, and I think uh, this whole deal with Netflix was a good wake up call, no? Because um, it does it does uh, ring a bell now that Nona Gaprindas really was then even even more precious than than originally portrayed in in that. I mean, the Queen's Gambit was an amazing show. That was like the the one thing, no, that that was not right. Yeah, well said. And and Luciana, I know you've had, so obviously we just mentioned some potential chess role, role models. As I mentioned to you, um, as we were brainstorming this, I know that you had um, a grandmaster that you worked with when you were a youth champion in addition to these uh, female role models. So when I did raise the topic that these interviews are about chess role models, uh, who was the first person that you thought of? Um, I think... I think uh, as chess players grow and get more mature, like we get to know more people and hence our um, perceptions of the world change. And so for me, I mean, I've had like different role models throughout my chess career. I would say that the very first chess role model for me was my 
my first coach. He is an international master. He's um, he was I, I don't know if he's still active, but he he was one of the top players in Peru back in the day. And his name is Mario Belli, and he was the um, he he represented Peru in several Olympiads. And he happened to be the coach at a summer camp in my school. I was eight years old. And so I registered for the summer camp. I didn't know him. I just knew that um, I was going to play chess. Um, and in each summer camp, each summer, like I would register for two sports. No, So on that year, <laughs> it was uh, chess and gymnastics of all things. And, and um and I went in, in that camp without really knowing much about him or about chess. But later on, I saw, I saw his name in the newspaper and how he was going to represent Peru. I, I think at the Olympiad. I, I don't remember. No, maybe not at the Olympiad because that wasn't a year, an Olympic year. But in any case, I saw his name. I saw him being recognized in one of the most important newspapers in my country. And I remember telling my mom, um, I want to be like him. I want to represent Peru. I want to uh, play, you know, Olympiads or whatever tournaments. And um, I want to be <laughs> a master. And um, I, you know, in, I, I stopped uh, um, working with him or training with him. Um, and later on, I had other coaches. But I do think that it was... It was great to have had him in my first uh, steps because, um, obviously, I mean he's he he was way stronger to be the the, the coach of a beginner, but uh, but it was that that sort of inspiration that he provided. Not like wow, I know somebody who is very very strong, very important <laughs> in chess in our country. Um, so I think chronologically that was my first. Uh, probably that my first role model in chess. Later on, of course, I learned about um, Susan Polgar, Judith Polgar, and I mean, they are amazing role models to have. But I also think that in addition to the role models that we have that are very strong or like, you know, excellent at the top of, of the game, there are also other types of role models. I think um, with um, with more content you know we, for, for instance right now we are seeing all of this generation of young content creators that in one way or another are impacting the game of chess they are making they are making it more um popular there's more people that play chess now many learn about chess through them so i think now we do have a more um the term role model can be more right. widely uh, yeah. ap applicable yeah so, so Luciana, I think you raise an important point, and that was part of the reason that I decided to do this role models theme. Is yes, the Polgars are legends uh, and household names in the chess world, rightfully so. But as you say, without someone like your international master coach, um, such a stroke of luck, obviously, to have have someone of that stature to be at your camp, and without all those people with their sort of boots on the ground, um, there's um there's not someone like you may not go on to to have the accomplished chess career that that you've had now luciana let me ask you from a chess perspective uh what are what have been the biggest lessons imparted to you whether it be from you know these legends like the polgars or someone like uh one of your youth coaches uh do you recall learning any specific lessons whether it be from playing through someone's games or interacting with a coach personally um I think um I think the lessons that I'm more um that have left me a, a, a more long lasting impact have been the the analysis of my games when I had to like provide a very um meticulous <laughs> analysis of my thought process and even like recording my um my time control so my one of my well or, um, after you know Mario Belli the international master I told you about I had I worked for years with another coach who was a national master who was who was very um who was very aggressive and I and I do you know um 
although I don't play like those uh, aggressive repertoires anymore. I mean, I, I do feel like I was, um, I, I had a good influence from him. But then uh, the coach that I was working with for the longest time was this Russian Peruvian uh, grandmaster. At that time, he was an international master. And actually, his name is Georgi Castaneda, and he's actually responsible for, um, for raising several uh, extraordinary talents in Peru. Um, apart from, from me, I mean, he also had students like um, the Cori siblings, Jorge and Daisy, Emilio Cordova, and um, he he came from this, you know, uh, from this school that where things were <laughs> very um, thought, uh, well thought. And I think that, um, for instance, like that analysis of the games and were things that came from Boretsky, you know, uh, Mark Boretsky, a very well-known um, coach from from Russia. Um, and so I think those those things had had a long lasting impact. And then at that time also my, my game became more positional. <laughs> so all of that aggressive impetus that I used to have before, <laughs> um, that was more, um, toned down. And I was, um, I was able to, I think, understand chess in general in a, in a different way. That, that's good that you were able to make that adjustment. So did Grandmaster Castaneda, do you remember, did, were there like, specific advice he gave you did it was it just through game analysis like what what helped you transition from being an attacking player to more well-rounded Luciana I think what it was what helped or you know what kind of like was very conducive to it was that also my repertoire changed so I went from playing dragon Sicilian dragon and Benoni to playing Ooh, French <laughs> <laughs> to playing French and in, in um Nimso Indian so um I I can to be honest, I cannot point at this moment like some specific thing, but I I do I well I do think that in general I have ingrained this thought of like what does my opponent want? Not prophylaxis, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. How do Speaking I stop of that? Yeah. And um, and I would say that that's uh, that's been uh, uh, an advice that I think I um, I carry on a lot when I play chess. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, and I wouldn't feel bad necessarily that you're not saying that you're not, that you're saying like I can't impart this one lesson because Luciana, this is a, I think that's the eighth interview I've recorded for this series. I don't know in what order they're going to be released, but it's been a common theme where someone doesn't necessarily uh, teach you this exact thing, this exact uh, skill that you can pinpoint, but it's more that they they show their own enthusiasm and passion for chess and their own. Uh, willingness and uh, work ethic to get better. And that sort of often gets passed down from generation to generation. That sort of like, you you know, you play your game, you look at your game, you try to gather as much information from it as you can. Like that sort of process is often like the main role of the coach. I do feel better that now that you're saying that. But further to this point, I wanted to share with you some very nice experience. Um, back in December, I participated in an um, in-presence camp that took place in, in Sieges, Barcelona. And this camp was the end-of-year program for the FIDE Chess Abuel Academy. Uh, little information about the FIDE Chess Abuel Academy. This is a collaboration between Chess Abuel and the International Chess Federation that benefits... Um, around 300 kids from around the world. They they get access to free chess award courses, but also weekly classes with some amazing chess legends. And at the end of the year, the most dedicated 12 students get, um, get to participate in an on-site camp experience. And in last December, we had an, an amazing opportunity. We had um, the Grandmasters Artur Jusupov and Alexei wow. Shiro. They were yeah. the ones conducting the camp. And um, and there were eleven kids. One of them, unfortunately, didn't get um, his visa. And uh, they were nice enough to let me <laughs> get in uh, some training sometimes because since they were an odd number, they needed an even number. <laughs> they needed one more person to to play. And it was it was such a nice, you know, circle circle moment I guess because we did the same like I mean we were playing we were like writing down we tried to get uh, the time uh, 
Grandmaster Yusupo asked us to record the time stamps. And so, it, yeah, it was a full circle moment because, I mean, it was like, I think it was an honor. It was also such a pleasure to be playing, you know, with some of the most promising kids from around the world. Like, I mean, this kid, from these kids, I think you will hear many, many good things uh, soon. But also, I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, Grandmaster Yusupo has worked directly with Boretsky and together they have created this extraordinary chess literature for improvers. And also they have, you know, coached so many super strong people. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what, a, what, what, an, what an extraordinary experience to be part of that. Yeah, absolutely. With, 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 with him, no? Yeah, absolutely amazing. I mean, Shirov, of course, legendary for his over-the-board prowess and for fire on board, and especially his attacking style. And Yusupov, I mean, you're really, you're getting straight into that Soviet, like, Soviet classic trainer lineage, as you said, former um, uh, student of and collaborator with Mark Dvoretsky himself. So uh, yes. in addition to being a top 10 player himself, Yusupov, so it doesn't get much better than that. Ben, and you know, I grew up with those books, with uh, Jusupo's books. So for me, it was like a, like a whole dream, like, wow, amazing. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I mean, speaking of passion for chess, Alexei Shirov, he, like our classes were uh, supposed to be two hours, but not for him. <laughs> he would go on and on and it would be like three hours. He would be, you know, um, um incansable how do you say this in, in english like he wouldn't get tired he would have like all of this energy to continue to 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 work on chess amazing wow well it sounds like you've had a lot of role models touch your life was well, luciana the, the last thing i want to hear about as we start to wrap up is from your course itself now i'm going to put you on the spot i know that you highlight right. a lot of uh great female players from <laughs> uh from chess history but if you were to pick one out of the, uh, the the champions covered in your book, uh, which one would you pick as your singular chess role model? Oh, that really puts me um, on a, in a bind. Um, I want to say that um, prior to, to writing this course, I thought like, you know, probably Nonaga Pindashvili is going to be the strongest. Bela Menchik, probably the, the most fascinating story. But um, after doing the research, after putting in the work, I mean, yes, Nonaga Prindashvili was definitely uh, the strongest, but also she had a very fascinating story. And even, you know, even the 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 champions who came between Vera and her, they were inspiring in different ways. One thing that really impressed me was that, for instance, um, the second and the third world champions, they had some... Um, I mean, humane side to them, and they did things that were that changed, um, that helped other others and changed lives. No, for instance, uh, Lyudmila Rudenko, the second world champion, she um, she helped kids kids escape during the Leningrad siege during the wow. the war in the forties, and then in number three, she was. Um, Later in her life, you know, she became a, a, a chess promoter and a chess author. But when she was younger, and I think even before she became a world champion, she would go to the hospitals and she would uh, play with the soldiers. She would play with, uh, you know, with anyone there to kind of like uh, provide some much needed distraction from everything that was going on that was terrible at that time. Um, That's quite and, inspiring. Wow. It is, it is. And then, you know, number four also has some great uh, achievements of her own. And and she has one record that nobody else has. So get this. She is the only player, male or female, who has won a classical world championship, but also a correspondence world championship. Oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah. So like that, I feel like there are several things that we can get, um, that we can get inspired from. Although I think I based based on the based on some games of no, games of Nona, I think that Nona takes them. Takes the cake. Yeah. Well, also, takes the cake, yeah. 
I mean, I love that you mentioned in the course that Nona is still playing competitive chess into her 80s. She I does. Mean. She does. Okay, if that is not inspiring, I don't know what is. I mean, it's mind-blowing that somebody who started playing, like, you know, for uh, since she was so young, she, of course, played uh, chess since she was a child, and, and then she progressively became better. But, like, even until now, she's playing, and she's winning. She's winning all of these World Senior Championships. She has eight under her belt. As of March of 2023, she has won eight World Senior Championships. So if you if you add those eight years to um, to to her 13 years of um, a, no, sorry, it was not 13. She was a world champion for 16 years. So you get like she's been a world champion for 24 years. That's much incredible. respect, much respect and admiration to her. Absolutely. Well said. Luciana, this has been amazing. The course is called Queens of the Chessboard. Uh, if people want to check out Chessable Classroom, they can find you on Twitter. Is there anyone else you would like to give a shout out before we say our goodbyes, Luciana? Sure. I would like to to acknowledge also Jennifer Shahari, fantastic chess champion, poker champion, and advocate for women in chess. And actually, um, at some point during the creation of my course, um, we were in communication and I shared with her that I was working on this project and I also shared with her how, you know, sometimes um, when you are doing something for the first time or when you are doing something that becomes, you know, <laughs> more progressively more difficult, you start getting some 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 doubts and and uh, she was... She was incredible. She she gave me great words of encouragement. And, and so not only I have this respect and admiration for her, for her career and everything she does as an ambassador for chess and as an advocate for women in chess, but and for chess becoming more inclusive, not just for women, but for every everyone. Um, but also I do appreciate that um, that personal encouragement. Yeah. Well, well said. Of course, uh, I'm personal friends with Jen, so I'm biased, but this is not the first time her name has come up this season. No, no big surprise there. Shout out to Jen. She's doing uh, amazing work. Um, well, Luciana, it's been a lot of fun. Really appreciate it. Thanks for joining the uh, How to Chess podcast. Thank you so much, Ben. It's been very fun to have this chat. Likewise, I agree. <laughs>